Hi, my name is Luke Clancy, and welcome to the Cedar Log. On this week's episode, we actually have two very special guests. We got to interview them at the 2021 NE5 Conclave at Goose Pond. So I hope you guys can sit back, relax, and enjoy the good time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cedar Log. Today we have special guests here at Goose Pond Scout Reservation at Section Con NE5 Conclave. We have Derek Porter, National Chief for 2021, and Greg Brown, the National Vice Chief. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for having us. Excited to be here. So before we get started, we're also going to be eating bean boozled jelly beans. Oh no. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, they're jelly beans. They look the same, but they have different flavors ranging from birthday cake to dead fish. You guys excited? As long as I get the birthday cake one, yes. I don't so think excited. anyone's going to get the birthday cake one. Like I can, I can bet you on that one. I'm hoping you get the dog food, Derek. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> There were some people who were very much hoping to see you guys get the bad ones. I'm sure they are. So what? what's the plan with the Bean Boozled? Are we, we're just going to do one, right? So, we're going to do, he, he wants to do one. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not doing one. So we're going to take these periodically between questions, and at the end, you're going to be eating a bunch of them at once, and, you know. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. Whatever you guys say. <laughs> Man. Okay. So to start off, have you guys ever done a podcast or uh, interview before? Uh, yes. Yeah. If you, if you tuned in for Momentum Discover, we got quite a bit of practice uh, speaking on air, so hopefully that'll translate to today. We didn't have any beans, though, so we might need some practice there. Next <laughs> national event. Yeah, exactly. Ne next national event? Yep. All right. So when did you guys first join scouting? Oh, I first joined scouting when I was in first grade as a Tiger Cub, which must have been, what, like 14 years ago at this point? Yeah, I think I joined scouting in 2010, I believe. Uh, so we're looking at about 11 years. Yeah. Wow, you guys ever feel old being in scouting for so long sometimes? Uh, sometimes you kind of just sit there and you're like, man, I, I joined quite some time ago, and it kind of hits you. But uh, no, I don't think I've ever, I would ever say I felt like old in scouting. So when did you guys take your ordeals, and what lodges are you from? You I'm sorry. from Sacklin Lodge in San Jose, California. And I went through my ordeal in February of 2015. I uh, am from Wapalani Lodge 43, right here in uh, Section 95. And I went through my ordeal, uh, I believe it was the fall of 2016. Fall of 2016, okay. So with that, I'm going to each take a bean now. Oh, great. Would anybody... Uh, no, you just got to pour one in your hand. You just can't, you can't pour? Pick, you, I can't, can't, like, you can't pick it out. I can't grab the blue one? No, you cannot. You know how much flack you would catch from, you know, all the airmen watching right now? They'd be like, oh, oh, I, oh, like I, know, I know what that one is. Oh. Okay. Oh. I took two. I'm not going to. This is the toothpaste one. Whoa, what is one. that yeah, one? Yeah, it's the toothpaste one. Yeah. I, have no, I have another one. I'll trade you. You're going to trade me? For the toothpaste Yeah, we got to look at the back here. Oh, I'm hoping for chocolate pudding. I oh, think... is that the dog food one? Yeah. Oh. I don't know what I have. All right, you guys are I right. I think I have. Cheers. I think I have one, egg. two, three. Yeah, it's definitely rotten egg. It's definitely oh, no, not chocolate good. pudding. No, it's 1,000% rotten egg. That's not good. Wow, this was a mistake. Why would we do this? And dog. It's Who great content. This? <laughs> man, this is, this, oh. Man, I hope you guys have, like, gum. We don't. Oh. Or no water either. either. No water. Hope you guys, like, just wear a mask the rest of the weekend. Just straight up beans. <laughs> just straight up beans. <laughs> Put that in quotes. That's I gonna feel be... sorry for my dog now. For dog food? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Within the Order of the Arrow, what positions have you guys held? Would you like to start? Too many at this point. Uh, <laughs> too many. So I started off uh, within my chapter as the chapter chief. Uh, the chapter chief, when I was inducted, uh, became a close friend of mine, and he encouraged me to start off as a chapter chief, and that to this day is one of my favorite positions within the OA. Uh, and I've also held numerous other positions at the lodge level, and I spent a number of years at the section level as a section vice chief and section chief uh, before being elected. Yeah, I uh, I served, I've served similar to Greg in a lot of chairman positions and, and things like that in my lodge, but I've also, uh, all of my elected positions, I've served as lodge secretary, lodge chief, uh, then I served as section chief of any five, uh, right in our 
our section here that we're at Conclave for, and then uh, I was elected national chief. So those are all my elected positions that I've held in the OA. So being that you were a section chief, I have to ask, do you have a favorite lodge in section any five? Well, I, I'm a little biased considering uh, that I'm from a lodge in section any five. But considering that we're on the Cedar Log podcast, I'll, I'll say that my favorite lodge is Unami Lodge. Okay, we, we got to make sure we clip that later, guys. We're going to use that out of context. <laughs> so Derek, as a past section chief, oh, my breath smells so bad. What made you run for the entire national chief position as a whole, going from section chief? That's a good question. Um, I think, at the end of the day, I think the, really, the real reason that I decided to run for national chief is I was just looking for to serve on a greater level, right? I, I really enjoyed my time as section chief. I really enjoyed my time as lodge chief. I think the reason that I did is just because of the people. And uh, honestly, national chief's just an extension of that, right? There's just more people to talk to and more people to work with. And I've loved, uh, I loved that part of all my past positions and I wanted to keep going. So national chief was kind of the next step. So I threw my hat in the ring and was lucky enough that it worked out in my favor. So Greg, what was, what, oh, man. What was it like first meeting Derek and realizing that you were gonna be the national vice chief? Like that's a that's a pretty big deal for anyone. What was it like? First meeting Derek, that is. Yeah. So Derek. I know meeting Derek is a pretty big deal, right, Greg? Yeah, Derek and I had <laughs> met uh, previously a year uh, before running for office during our first terms as section chief. Uh, so it's definitely interesting getting to work with Derek leading up to the election. Uh, and then learning that we would be working together for the next year. i definitely say that Derek and I uh, work together well. So we're going to do another question, and after that one, we'll take another bean. We'll torch you guys a little bit more. Feel free to do a few questions before the next bean. <laughs> oh, we're oh. fine with whatever. <laughs> no, I, I think it's almost time. So when you guys found out you were going to be national members of the Order of the Arrow, what was that like, and how did those around you perceive you and you know, see you differently, or how did they congratulate you? Oh, that, that's a good question. Um... So we didn't just like find out, right? So considering the fact that we ran, uh, we knew that there was a chance, right, if we were elected, that we would become uh, the, the chief and vice chief. So I, I'll answer the second part of your question of how people kind of reacted. Um, it was really overwhelming, honestly, the, uh, the amount of messages and support that I got after uh, the election and people reaching out just, you know, saying congratulations um, was really incredible. A lot of members of my lodge, members of my, like, my home troop, uh, reached out. So, so that was really just overwhelming. Um, I don't really think many people have treated me differently because of it. Uh, I, I kind of go back to lodge events and I'm just Derek uh, and it's really nice. Uh, so I don't think too much has changed because of it. But um, how people reacted right after, everyone was you know really, really happy for me. It, it really made it feel real when I got all those uh, congratulations, I guess. Okay, what, about, yeah. what about you? I can speak to the like what it feels like uh, after being elected because um, it's a lot of tension, a lot of stress building up uh, going into the election. Um, and it's very relieving afterwards and very exciting uh, to look forward to the year that's upcoming and just um, being proud of yourself that you'll be able to um, make decisions and work on all of the initiatives that um, like we get went into the election presenting. So as national committee members, oh man, I was supposed to get Bean first actually. Let's do that real quick. Feel free. No, no, no you're not even forget. Oh, I don't like the looks of that. Oh, I think that is one that looks fun. Is that dirty dishwasher? No, I think. Oh, maybe it is. I'm trying to get this toothpaste right there. You're, if you get toothpaste, I don't think. I'm oh, gonna... neither of these look appetizing. Oh, congrats. I hope it's toasted marshmallow. And not There's no way it's toasted. Stinky bug. This one's gonna be. See the stinky socks? All right, you guys ready? Cheers. Three, two, one. Oh, that one's actually good. No, it wasn't. Tutti Frutti. No, it wasn't. Um, I don't know what's in my mouth. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> nice and sweet. <laughs> so, as uh, national committee members, have you guys had an experience that stands out, you know, that you've gotten to do? I would definitely say working on the National Council of Chiefs this summer, uh, the program that we're putting together, uh, just being able to lead an event at the national level has definitely stood out. Yeah, to go off of that, right, I, I've never had the experience to lead such a big conference, and not even not even big by numbers, but big as, re as in reach, right? We've invited all of our local leadership to this conference this summer, and I think just gathering all of our lodge and section key threes is going to be really incredible. And, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of past national officers that had the opportunity to 
uh, oversee, you know, Operation Arrow at, at a jamboree, and there's a lot of past officers that have had the opportunity uh, to oversee a NOAC. And, you know, we don't get those experiences with the times uh, that we're kind of, that we've been kind of dealt with this year, but I, I think it's equally exciting um, to be putting this conference together, if not more exciting, right, doing something brand new. And that's really what the NCOC is going to be all about, and we're really excited about that. So how do you guys balance everything, you know, being part of the national committee and then doing school or maybe a job with it too? How do you just balance all that? I would say Google Calendar is our best friend. <laughs> that is that is definitely true. Uh, Greg and I are very transparent with our calendars with each other. We, we often have to hop on calls together and discuss things that we're working on. So uh, we actually share our calendar at all times so we know what uh, the other person's going to Let's see. I can see on my calendar to. here that Derek has class on Monday from 8 to noon. Correct. Uh, <laughs> 8 to noon I'll be in class on Monday and, and Greg will know not to call me unless it's super important and then obviously scouting comes first. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. <laughs> anyway, no, to, to answer your question about balancing, calendar is definitely one big thing. Um, another thing is, you know, uh, kind of like what I touched upon with calendar, of being transparent. Um, Greg and I are both full-time students, and you know it, it takes quite a bit of explaining to your teachers uh, for them to understand kind of what you do as a national officer. So uh, we make sure that we stay connected with all of our teachers. Anytime we miss a class, we uh, we keep up with the work. Um, as for like a job and things like that, it's kind of the same thing. You have to, you know, prioritize certain things and, and balance a schedule. Um, it's certainly difficult uh, to. So I have a summer job. It's certainly difficult with my employer to tell them how much I'm going to be away during the summer, right? But it's just something you have to work through. And I think uh, it's a lot of time management skills and a lot of good uh, experience of like working with people and, and figuring out, you know, how am I going to fit all of these responsibilities that I have, you know, into a single summer or into a single week sometimes. And uh, it's just really just an opportunity to to grow those time management skills. So do either of you guys work at a summer camp? Uh, I have staffed for two summers, once at Camp Chawanaki and another time at Camp Fiesta Island, both in California. And what did you uh, do there? Uh, I've always been a sailing instructor. Oh, okay. uh, one of my biggest hobbies is sailing. Uh, I own a Hobie 16 and a laser. I've taught on both of those. I'm going to pretend like I know what those both of those things are. You and I both, yeah. We're going to just yeah. shake our heads and nod. <laughs> a laser, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that one sound cool? Yeah, yeah it sounds it does, very it cool. <laughs> So have you guys had the privilege of traveling within the past year, you know, meeting other airmen? Yeah, uh, quite a bit so far, uh, much more than we thought, right, just a few months ago with the pandemic. Um, I've had the opportunity to to visit uh, every region so far. I think I, ha I have been in every region, which is great. Uh, I went to a Western Region fundraising event earlier in the year, a Central Region at Alas, a few section conclaves in the Southern Region. So I've hit all four, uh, excited to visit more lodges and sections throughout the year but uh to your point about you know meeting airmen from all over the country that that's the best part of the job hands down right uh, i'm excited about the ncuc i'm excited about all the policy uh that we work on at the national level but just being here or being at any air uh, order of the air event speaking to people is, is what i love about this position so it's been great greg what about your traveling this year yeah i haven't done quite as much i still haven't made it out to the central region yet um, but we're definitely seeing travel pick up. But even when we're not able to travel in person, uh, for example, at Momentum Discover, we were still, still able to interact uh, with airmen from across the country, which is really what it's all about. Do you have a plan to travel to Central Region yet? I do. I will actually uh, be going on a road trip this summer, and I'll be passing through the Central Region. Ooh, that's, that's got to be exciting. <laughs> yeah. So uh, working as National Chief, and or National Chief and National Vice Chief, how do you balance that between, you know, working on these national committees and jobs and working in your own lodge? That That's a really good question. And it kind of goes back to that time management uh, that I was talking about before, right? It, a lot of people, uh, when you're a national officer, want you to do a lot of different things. Um, I, I have a lot of lodges that reach out and ask you, ask you to hop on virtual events and give speeches and uh, assist at conclaves and lodge events and things like that. Uh, but for my home lodge, it's kind of just making sure that you can make time for them, right? And it, it's important that uh, even if you have other responsibilities in scouting, to never forget where you came from. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I, I had the chance to go. Um, I was the vigil chairman, the vigil selection committee chairman for my lodge. So we had our vigil weekend. And then right after, I got to serve as an Alangamat. And that was really a great experience because I, I hadn't served as an Alangamat in quite some time. And, you know, being able to, to serve as the national chief, but also still get that experience that, you know, a brand new airman gets the first time they come back to an induction and help out uh, being in a Langamat. That, that was really a great experience. 
So before we end the interview, we're gonna what I want you guys to do is I want you to take a small handful of these. And I'm gonna go through a bunch of questions, and after each question, you guys answer. You gotta you gotta take a bean. You said a small handful. Small handful. Five. Five is small. Yeah. Five. How did you get two blue ones? I don't know. Here, don't worry, I'll pull them back. Oh, he, he didn't put the blue one back. All right. Question number one: Does pineapple go on pizza? No. If it's Hawaiian pizza, no. yes. No, it doesn't go on pizza. But no. Derek and I love a good meat lover. That's true. Meat lovers pizza. Sign me up anytime. Got a go-to pizza place? Go-to pizza place: Santillo's in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Look it up. If you haven't been, worth your time. You you guys heard it first from the National Chief. You guys believe in ghosts? No. Yes. All right. Let's go. Is mint chocolate chip ice cream a good flavor? Oh, that one was bad. Mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> yes. Mint chocolate chip ice cream is not a good flavor. We really don't agree on as many things as we might have thought. Would you rather go to the beach or the mountains? Beach. beach. Who's impacted your life the, mo the most? My mother. Mentors. Yeah, my parents as well. All right, last question. Oh, that one was bad. Oh, yeah, I can taste them now. <laughs> last question. The most controversial. Is NASCAR a sport? Yes. No. All right. If you guys have any more, just eat them. Eat them all. Cheers. Man, what a fun interview. With that being said, oh, this is the end of our interview. We want to thank all the airmen who made this possible, including Reese Wallace, Griffin O'Brien, Matt Luke, Luke Clancy, and a huge thank you, and a huge thank you to Derek Porter and Greg Brown for being here, doing this interview, eating these crazy beans, and yeah, that's it. Yeah! Oh no, they're bad.